Oh, we got this big old Class A here. One of these fancy Gulf Streams. It's actually a nice coach. She's um, remodeling it, I guess, inside, doing some sealing work and putting the cedar sealing and all that stuff. Let's go up there and take a look at this roof. Hey, the suspension on this thing drops all the way down where the stairs just sit. That's pretty cool. But, uh, but it drops down pretty good. All right, let's go up there and take a look at it. Well, we've already had our AC guru take the air conditioners off. So we're going to strip this thing down. And someone's put a coating on here. And I'm not a fan of these coatings. Obviously, he's still got a leak, and that's why it's here, because the coatings don't work. What happens a lot of the times is if you do have a leak, it'll get up underneath that coating. It'll go somewhere else. You can see he's already tried to fix all that over there and over here. So we'll obviously be taking all that apart. But uh, that's what we got so far. So we're going to check out all of this here. The roof looks pretty well balanced. It looks pretty well balanced. So some of the things that we we do is we're going to make sure all those ducts are all nice and tight. But like I said, we'll pull this all off here. And um, now this is a ply foam roof, so we're not going to be able to check all the insulation. We're just going to strip it off. We'll redeck it. We're getting rid of this big monster relic of a uh, satellite, I guess. We're getting rid of that. And not sure about the, the air horns. I think we do have a new antenna headed our way. Uh, that one's probably going to be coming off, and um, that's uh, so far. That's what we got. Doesn't look like we. Oh, well, we got this gutter on here. That's a cheesy gutter. So probably going to have to replace that. And just kind of give you an overview here. Look how much they slobbered on there. You know, a lot of times when we try to take this off, you can still see some, like, you know, the original, you'll tell that, you can tell that we took caulking off there. We try to do the best, we, you know, our strike is going to look nice, but, and you know, you're probably going to see the, the difference is what I'm getting at. The difference meaning, like, you take it off and whatever color the coach is, you know, you may see a, a line there, so, but... Just one of your old rubber roofs. So he just put some on here and then uh, obviously taped it all up, primed it up, and everything. So looks like he's got an issue with the lens right here. So we're going to replace that lens. We won't be able to fix that. And then uh, that plumbing's going to go. We're going to put our boots on there. And look at all that. It just keeps slobbering it, slobbering it, slobbering it. So. But that, uh, that's what we got so far. Let us get to work. We're going to take this thing, strip it down, see what we got. More to come. All right. We got some damage here. Looks like somebody tried to reframe all that. Probably the owner did. Yeah, some more damage on that shoulder. What a mess. That's not the worst thing we've ever seen. We'll get that straightened out. Up here, it doesn't look terrible. We're going to end up putting gutters on there. Let me get that treated up. This is for the satellite. Right here. Oh, but no, there's the antenna. Those are the satellite wires. So we'll end up kind of tucking them out of the way. All right, well, outside all that, let's see what we can get done and get repaired. We're going to spray it down with some mold kill just, just for the sheer heck of it. You know, some of that is water staining, not necessarily mold, but um, I'm going to still soak it down. Video time. Face out of the way unless you want to be on YouTube. All right. see, this here, we had some of the, you know, the discoloration. This had already come up. We decided to pull this piece up. Then we're going to cut this, we're going to cut all that, remove it, and then we'll redeck it. 
and uh, this here, I think the owner reframed this, but there's no screws in here, so we're going to fasten that back up. We got this here that's rotted. We got this here that's rotted right here. The other big concern that I had, look at these wires, nothing to protect them, just this shoulder. Look at the way they negotiated those staples. Now you had to have been on your game to make sure you didn't pop through there, so, which is good. It looks like somebody was paying attention, but we're going to put a plate over that nonetheless. I noticed that over here too. Okay. So, and if you look, there was a staple right there. Even my, right there, that was a staple mark. So, it had to have gone down in there a little bit. So, at least it cleared it. But, same here. So, that's what we're going to do, put plates over them. And then we got to build new shoulders. These are all rotted. So we can't use these anymore. They're all rusty and we're going to get rid of all those. So, that's what we're doing now, just trying to make all the, the repairs. Looks like I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, that's rotted. Oh, looks close. We'll double, we'll double check it and see how good or bad it is. You know, it may just be that little bit of corner there. We may not have to take the whole thing out. So we got to double check all those. And then uh, this is the piece that we just took up. That's the piece that we took up over here. So we'll go and check that. That looks pretty dry. That looks pretty dry. So it looks like the brunt of it is right here. What we're doing now. Just making sure we get some mold kill on here. I want it all soaked down. So then we'll uh, peel the rest of this stuff up and we'll see what we got. So we investigated this shower frame. It's just it wasn't. It's just kind of glued in there. Nothing seems to be secured together. Maybe it's stapled, but we see some staples in it. So we're gonna reframe it so it's just tighter and make sure it's, it's the way it should be. And this isn't at its proper elevation either, this here. So you can see it looks like it ramps up a bit. So we're going to try and get that squared away. Make sure everything's seated right because it's not even with the foam. Although there, there was some decking that was supposed to be on there, but that's that's way too much of a gap right there. That's way too much of a gap. So compared to like this one down here, it's sitting though, it looks like it, even though it's rotted, that's closer to where you need to be. And we got to replace all that framing right there. A lot of times what happens with these is it's a compound problem. One, the seal around there, like Dicor wants you to keep putting more on, you know. And I joke and I say the other one putting more on is more on because the system just is terrible. Uh, Dicor exploits people's ignorance to roof systems and cons them into buying $15 a tube or whatever they are, $14, $15. $15. Anyhow, they con them into buying and that product and slobber more on every single time every three four months that's that's ridiculous but um, that being said the other problem that happens is when you have this lens that goes on here uh, especially on a cold morning and then it's going to warm up through the day but on a cold morning the sun comes up you know you'll see condensation on maybe even the side of the coach you'll see it on but not only is it on the top it's also on the interior so this foam right here acts as like a thermal barrier, so you're not going to get it like on the phylon on the inside, but on something like this, since there's no um, thermal barrier at all, then you're going to see the condensation. So those weeps go down and they start rotting out around the ceiling. It's pretty common. So we're going to try and see if we can put a vent over here that I designed on a couple other ones. I've had trouble with these before where folks complain about them, and I've just stewed over it. So now what we're going to do is put a solar fan over here, and then over on this side, we're going to put uh, a, a ba basically a draft. So when the fan kicks on, it'll draw some air, and it'll come over, and it'll keep that air flowing over there to pull the moisture out. That's the plan. And it's going to be a solar, so whether you're here or not, whether it's parked or whatever, it's always going to work. You don't have to worry about plugging it in or anything. So, All right, well, let us get to work on all this mess and get it all cleaned up. There's probably not much we can do with this steel. We'll take a look at it. This thing is gone. You can see that one is, so if I can get underneath there to, to release them and put some fresh in there, that would be awesome. So we may even try doing that, and then uh, we can get an idea of what's going on with all this. Motor yeah. come. So we had all these wires that were going through, and we wanted to put plates on them. And everybody said if they get lucky, they're not lucky. We got that one there. This is a communication wire for the air conditioner. So we want to make sure it's not breached. But the staple did go right through it. Is there another one in there? I believe it hit this this white one as well. Mm -hmm. There's a couple more right there in that white one. 
You see where it hit twice. Yep, right there. Those are the staples. I think if those are separated, they'll be fine. As long as it doesn't breach the into and push right another there. one or a strand across. That's the only one we're concerned about right now. That's a communication one. Those are little tiny wires in there. So, you can see it. And uh, we've already got all this ripped up. You can see we're going to redeck all this and uh, get it put back together. And then we'll, we're going to deal with this issue here. All right, getting back to this communication wire. I was curious if that staple had gone through and breached one of these wires. So what I did was I opened it up with an X-Acto knife. And I got my bifocals on. And I opened it up and it was fine. And that's what I want to show. So it is fine. I feel confident. It didn't go through like the wire isn't breached. It didn't get two wires at the same time. I'm trying to show you, but it's hard to do it with my fat fingers on these little wires holding the camera and running my mouth at the same time. But it's all set. So we're just going to um, probably put some tape on that there and she'll be good to go. And now we can start closing the roof. Well, we got our new roof deck down. And now what we're doing is we're just sanding down some of the edges that may be a little higher than the other. That's all. Sometimes when you glue it, we use a, a, a urethane foam adhesive. Sometimes it'll push one end up a little bit. So I want them just kind of smooth. So we're just kind of knocking it back just a little bit, trying to get it down. And uh, once we do that, we put our strips across here, our protective strips, and then we'll uh, end up uh, getting the roof on. Well, we get one side of the roof glued. This is the passenger side. It's already ready to go. We're gonna roll it over. Then we're gonna do the other side. Well, this is a slide out. We're gonna replace it, but the deck itself is good. We, we're gonna replace it. It had a rubber roof on it. We're gonna put a metal pan on it. That's what we're doing. So it's all prepped, and we'll get it going here in a little bit. All right, we're done with our big Gulf Stream. There's our logo. This uh, AC set back quite a bit. They're not normally like that. We usually have plenty of room, but uh, that's where this one landed. RVRI, March. 21 so that tells us when we did it when it comes in for inspections we can go hey how old is that roof if we see any issues we can always call a rep um, all the years i've been doing even commercial work i've never yet had to call one but the other plus on this is if you ever decide to sell it he doesn't have to uh have someone try and talk him down and say oh these rv roofs they all leak or you go hey i just had that put on you know back in 21 so anyhow so you see we've got all the stands in the back We've got everything is all heat welded in there. We've got uh, this front counter flash. What that does is it goes below the counter flash that's built into the curb. So all the rainwater will come down and it'll get underneath there and it'll wash out. But we just don't, there's a foam gasket up inside there. We just don't want anything penetrating that foam gasket. So I've got a fan over there. I'll explain that. Same thing with the skylight. We've got that all heat welded in there counter flash on every one of the curves they all have counter flash you got plumbing right here the plumbing again all heat welded and then when you pop it off if the cap were to come off this is all sealed the, any water would go right back into a holding tank the same with that other one on that other side over there this one over here that's not that's not plumbing I'll, uh, like, when I go back around I'll tell you what all that is refrigerator same thing all heat welded in another vent all heat welded in two more stands here we get the same AC um, counter flash on the front of this one as well so this is a Weingar 360 uh, that one there we got them on mounts there's plates up underneath there so we've got them on mounts and then the wires drop down inside there's another boot up underneath there you can barely see it oh see if we'll focus in uh, crummy Canon camera come on so you can see that little boot under there that's where the wires come down. I'm not a fan of those. I really don't like installing them. But since he's tore out all the ceiling, he's got everything he can, he's got everything there. I mean, he has access to hook up all the wires because it needs 12 volts and so forth. Got the air horns back on. We got those boots put there for the mount so those don't leak. Sealed everything up. Had uh, another wire for the satellite that was running. We got all that cleaned up. New gutters, an insert trim, double stripe of caulking. So there's caulking underneath when I just say uh, an adhesive sealant that we use for the turn bar and even the gutter rail and then once that, that burps up we strike it down then we hit it with a lick of um, sealant and then we hit it with yet another lick of sealant so we got some spouts one of the things uh, if you look at the previous video the gutter kind of terminated right about here somewhere you know right right in this area so we extended it just to what maybe another 
um, 12 inches or so to clear the window because everything was drooling down the you know the door and the window so we put that in for him all right so we go around to the other side and all this all you know we got two strikes of caulking all the way down and around and uh, we're trying to uh, get this all unleashed so the customer can come get it all right and then I'll explain what this is so uh, I'll show you when you look at the well, if you remember the first part of the video this was all rotted and typically what happens it's a combination of things but um, part of it really is condensation when you look at the skylight lens on yours if you look at it, you're gonna see especially in the morning when there's dew you're gonna see all the dew or the condensation on there well that condensation is not just on there it's on the inside as well and then when the Sun comes up you know it makes obviously it tries to evaporate it if you will but all of it starts to the moisture and the frost if you will starts to uh, get droplets and they get in the side and they just chronically start rotting around the skylight it's common on a lot of them especially even ply foam but they are common on all these so what this is that's a solar fan that is a vent so what happens is when even if no one's around this fans gonna kick on when the Sun comes up and it'll pull all that moisture out so it doesn't rot that's my great idea hopefully it works um, you know we haven't we've done on the last few to see how they work we just haven't gotten feedback on them yet but um, I'm pretty certain that's gonna solve the problem because it's gonna constantly pull the air through it it's just con constantly gonna do it so it's not a high volume fan but it's enough to just pull a draw to get the uh, the moisture out and that's all you really need to keep the moisture from collecting up in there so like this one over here see same thing got the same problem so we'll probably end up putting one on there as well that one is a total mess but uh, that one looks a lot like this it, you know at first a lot of this was rotted over here was rotted around this AC and stuff so we fixed all that so that's our uh, Gulf Stream right there so keep in mind these are not DIY videos they're not um, if you get a tip out of it great but really these videos we put together for the customer or even other folks that want to have their coach done they're not DIY videos by no means um, there's a lot of steps to doing this and for us to try to navigate hey, where you're at what you got what kind of product you're using what's this what's you know all there's a whole bunch of things that come into play before you can put them together and um, you know a lot of guys they call us asking us all these questions um, there's not much I can do for you there really isn't I don't know what you're working on and at the risk of sounding rude I just honestly I don't have the time to do it I really don't because I spend you know 20 30 minutes on the phone with a guy and yet the phone rings for somebody else I just don't have that kind of time um, but we appreciate you watching and um, like you said if you get some tips out of this great um, the uh, the all this is all commercial there's a 60 mil commercial grade TPO that's what this is this is commercial grade it's not RV grade nothing is RV grade even all the sealants all the adhesives everything I use is commercial grade because I am a commercial contractor so by trade anyways so I've uh, been doing that for 37 years I guess 30 something years and um, when I sold my com company I just kind of stumbled into these and I saw how bad they were I designed the roofs we don't sell anything either so I don't sell the material I don't sell anything at all um, anything you possibly could need if you're planning on a DIY you can call your local supply house and say hey I'm trying to do this I'm trying to do that and they'll be glad to sell you all the products to do it so but uh, other than that we appreciate you watching and see you on the next one